Who really wrote the book of Genesis? A question that has puzzled scholars and believers for centuries. Today we question the enigmatic world of biblical authorship, specifically focusing on the origins of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. Genesis, the book that lays the foundation for the entire biblical narrative, has traditionally been ascribed to Moses. This belief is deeply ingrained in both Jewish and Christian traditions. The man who led the Israelites out of Egypt, who wandered with them through the wilderness, and who, according to these traditions, penned the laws and teachings that form the bedrock of these faiths. This is a view that has stood the test of time, reinforced by references in other biblical books that attribute laws and teachings to Moses. But like a cryptic puzzle, there's more beneath the surface that meets the eye. The authorship of Genesis is not just a matter of tradition, but a subject of intense scholarly debate. In the hallowed halls of academia, the name of Moses as the author has been questioned, dissected and studied under the microscope of modern biblical scholarship. What if there was more to the story? What if the authorship of Genesis isn't as clear-cut as tradition suggests? Here we'll challenge traditional beliefs and unravel the intricate collage of Genesis and the enigma surrounding the authorship of the world's most widely read book. Modern biblical scholarship introduces a new player in this ancient mystery, the documentary hypothesis, one of the most intriguing theories to emerge from this intellectual exploration. This theory throws a wrench in the traditional narrative, suggesting that the Pentateuch, including Genesis, is not the work of one author, but a composite, woven together from various ancient sources, each contributing its own distinct style, vocabulary and theological perspectives. According to this hypothesis, Genesis was shaped over several centuries by editors who fused together earlier written and oral traditions. They created the cohesive narrative that we find in the book today. This theory presents Genesis as an evolving patchwork, a testament to a collaborative process involving multiple authors and editors over time. It doesn't dismiss Moses, but rather places him in a choir of voices that contributed to the creation of Genesis. It suggests that the final form of Genesis was shaped not in one fell swoop, but through a process of redacting that likely occurred over several centuries. So, could Genesis be the result of a centuries-long editing process? If you've ever played a game of Chinese telephone, as it's known in some parts of the world, then you know where we're going with this. Could Christians have simply made up information about Moses being the author of Genesis? We have to consider the timeline. The book of Genesis chronologically concludes centuries before Moses was even born. This apparent inconsistency has stirred an intense debate among scholars and believers alike. Think about this. If we were to accept the traditional narrative, Moses, who lived during the Exodus, would have penned an account of the world's creation, the flood, and the lives of figures like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These events took place hundreds of years before Moses' time. How could Moses have an accurate account of these happenings? One may argue divine inspiration, that God himself revealed these events to Moses. But isn't this a convenient explanation? Doesn't it feel a bit too neat? It's as if we're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, bending the narrative to suit our beliefs. Furthermore, the book of Genesis does not explicitly credit an author. It doesn't start with written by Moses. It's an anonymous work. Could it be that Moses' authorship was an assumption made by early interpreters and believers, a tradition carried forward without question? So we're faced with a conundrum, a traditional belief that Moses authored Genesis and a scholarly perspective that suggests a more complex origin. The question then becomes, what do we choose to believe? Could this age-old belief be a mere fabrication or is there more to this story? You know what they say. There are three sides to every story. Despite the controversies, Moses continues to be widely recognized as the author of Genesis. Recognition is not a recent phenomenon, but rather it is deeply rooted in history. The early church, for instance, stood firmly on the belief that Moses penned down the book of Genesis. This belief was not unique to the early Christians alone. The first century Jewish historian Josephus also echoed the same sentiments, further cementing the traditional view of Moses as the author. The Jerusalem Talmud, a cornerstone of Jewish law and theology too, aligns with this view. Not only does it attribute the authorship of Genesis to Moses, but it also suggests that he had a divine hand guiding him. This perspective brings us to a crucial aspect of Moses' life. Moses, a Hebrew by birth, was raised in the Egyptian royal court. 
His upbringing in the palace equipped him with a wealth of knowledge and a distinctive perspective. But it was his unique relationship with God that truly set him apart. According to traditional beliefs, God used Moses as an instrument to record not only the history that he was a part of, the exodus from Egypt, the wanderings in the wilderness, the reception of God's laws, but also the history of creation and humanity. This divine inspiration, it is believed, allowed Moses to pen down the intricate details of a time that predated him. It's interesting to note the role that oral accounts and other available records played in the creation of Genesis. The history of God's people, Israel, was not something that was conjured up out of thin. Instead, it was meticulously collated from numerous sources, forming a comprehensive narrative that we now know as the book of Genesis. But does the Bible itself support this claim? The Bible in both the Old and New Testaments offers clues to Moses' authorship. From the sands of Egypt to the wilderness of Sinai, we trace the footprints of a man who, according to tradition, is the author of the book of Genesis. But what does the Bible itself say about this, starting with the Old Testament? In Exodus, the second book of the Bible, we find a significant clue. Chapter 17, verse 14, recounts God telling Moses to write an account of their victory over the Amalekites. This is the first instance in the Bible where Moses is explicitly commanded to write. Further along in the book of Leviticus, the first two verses of the first chapter show God speaking directly to Moses. In Numbers chapter 33 verse 2, Moses is said to have recorded the stages of their journey from Egypt at the Lord's command. The book of Deuteronomy begins with the words, These are the words Moses spoke. A clear indication that Moses was not just a leader but also a scribe, recording the events and laws of his time. The Old Testament isn't the only place where Moses' authorship is hinted at. The New Testament, too, offers indirect testimonies to Moses' authorship. For instance, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 4, Jesus refers to the law of Moses, acknowledging his role as a lawgiver and, by extension, a writer. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 26, references the book of Moses. Another indirect testimony to Moses as an author, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 29, Abraham tells the rich man about Moses and the prophets, indicating that Moses' writings were well known and respected in his time. This tradition of acknowledging Moses as an author continues in the Acts of the Apostles and the Epistles of Paul. In Romans chapter 10, verse 19, Paul refers to Moses saying, suggesting his authorship. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9, Paul quotes a law from Deuteronomy, attributing it to Moses. However, while these passages provide evidence of Moses' authorship, they do not specifically attribute the book of Genesis to him. They establish Moses as a writer, yes, but not necessarily the writer of Genesis. So the mystery persists. Is Moses the true author of Genesis, or is it a product of multiple authors? authors and editors. The debate continues, but one thing remains clear. The book of Genesis continues to intrigue and inspire regardless of who penned its words.